Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? The planet Mercury, which we looked at a few weeks ago, which was very close to Venus, which is now dropping rapidly towards the sun as it will head back around. Uh, we can see Mercury actually has not reached its greatest elongation east yet, even though we're looking in the western sky because it's moving towards the east as it rises away from the sun. So as we move forward, we can see how Mercury is fairly high and the ecliptic is has a pretty decent angle to it, although Mercury was better placed in late January and early February. This is still not a bad placement for us. It's still relatively high. If we look at our azimuthal grid, we can see how Mercury is good eight degrees above the horizon about an hour after sunset. So that's still plenty high to be able to see. I like to be able to look when it's at least five degrees above the horizon or more. So that's a good spot. And if you're not sure exactly where it's at, look for Capella in the Northwest and Procyon towards the West. And Mercury is gonna be about halfway in between. Uh, it's gonna change as we kind of go through the next two weeks or so. You can see how it's gonna move more towards Procyon as it sort of uh, moves over and then dips down and even switches position uh, where that is relative to the ecliptic. But there's a couple other things that you may want to take a look at as we zoom in a little bit on the 29th of May, you can see how Mercury is really super close to Messier 35. It's actually gonna be high enough up and it might be dark enough that you may be able to get a photo of it if you wait until, oh, an hour and 15 minutes after sunset when it's still about five degrees up, but the sky is dark enough that you may be able to zoom in with a lens and capture Mercury and M35 and you'll have an on, another opportunity the next day where Mercury will be above Messier 35. You'll have to use probably a zoom lens uh, and not necessarily a telescope because that's a pretty decent distance out there. Uh, if we look, that's gonna be a good over a degree. So telescope might be out of the question, but a zoom lens should probably work. Or if you have a DSLR, you might be able to attach it to a fast focal ratio refractor and still be able to get that. As we go forward though, watch what else happens. We can see how, uh, as we move forward in time, it's gonna also move towards this star, which is Epsilon Geminorum. Uh, and it's not too far away from that either. That's a double star. And uh, you may be able to capture the two of those on the sixth, perhaps the seventh, maybe the fifth as well, but the sixth looks like probably the best opportunity for that. And uh, we can watch how, if you want to, you can even capture how Mercury looks over that time if you get the same exact position. So if we start, we can see how, if we use our sky and viewing options window, we can look at the planet orbits. Just click on Mercury, so it only shows that one. Uh, we can catch how Mercury is gonna kind of do this a little bit up more for up until about the fourth when it reaches greatest elongation on June 4th, and then it's gonna drop back down so you can capture it over the course of a few weeks uh, and get it as it moves throughout the sky. If you have a camera that you can set up in the exact same position every night and uh, get it at the same time every night too, you'll be able to see how that would actually move and see the inner planet. The last thing I wanna show you is if you don't wanna do any of those things but you do wanna take a look at the planet and look at it closely, let's zoom way in on Mercury and you can see how it's got this half phase and as we go forward in time it's going to move more towards a crescent uh, and as we do that I don't know if you noticed over here you can see what's happening to the magnitude has gone dropped way down we were at like zero and then we dropped down to one and a half and that's because it's um we're just there's less of the planet that's going to be visible so we go from a 49.1 percent illuminated at a magnitude of exactly zero on the 29th and you can see how that illuminated gets smaller down to under a third of it illuminated and it drops down you know to below a magnitude and then we're only looking at less you know 20 percent of it illuminated by the 12th and a 1.4 magnitude but you can still see that phase of the planet if you get an opportunity uh the size of that is not very big um but so you'll need a lot of magnification but you can see that uh, if you put enough magnification on it uh, and look at it or if you even get a, a photo maybe of the planet as well so that's what you can see for mercury over the next actually two weeks over there in the west northwest sky uh, depending on your location and uh, check stellarium to get to see exactly where it'll be for you that's all for this week. 
Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller wishing you clear and dark skies.